This is a special Veterans Day edition of Chris 6 News, live from the USS Lexington. Thank you so much for joining us on a very special broadcast on this Veterans Day aboard the historic USS Lexington. And then just looking around here, wow, amazed by the tremendous efforts from our veterans in the past. Absolutely, yes. And Pat I'm Pat Simon. Simon. That's yeah. right, Pat Simon here and Katia Uriarte. And we are dedicating this very special edition of Chris 6 News to all of our veterans here in the Coastal Bend. It's just our way of saying thank you to all of our veterans. And tonight, Katya, not even the sky is the limit. That's right. We have some special guests yep. right now, and hopefully we're able to take that shot. Okay, we don't have it okay. yet, but I tell you what, we have some very special guests that are going to be here joining Joining us shortly, I'll give you a hint from the U.S. Coast Guard, and um, we think you're going to like it. Yeah, yeah, we had them at five o'clock. It's it's a really wonderful thing that they did, kind of tipping the wing. I said in, in the five o'clock, tipping their wings as their way of saluting our veterans who have served our country. And in fact, we have that flyover right now. This C-144 uh, from the Coast Guard flying over from north to south over the Lexington. It right is now. and just like you said a tip of the wing yeah. for us, as a salute to all of our veterans here in the coastal bend. You know the Coast Guard uses uh, these types of planes. There are three of them here in Corpus Christi and they use them as search and rescue also as drug enforcement. You yes. got to think about that. That's happening over. Oh. There and we is. can hear it. Oh, the sound it of the plane. sounds fantastic. And yeah. on this Veterans Day, it's a big thank you and a way to honor again all of our veterans. It certainly is. So let's bring things now back down to earth, right, and continue our show. Uh, headed out to the Borchard Fairgrounds in Robstown. That's right, and our Seth Kovar is live from the Field of Honor, which is the first year that this is happening here in the Coastal Bend. Seth? The Field of Honor ceremony just wrapped up here with a somber playing of taps and a 21 gun salute. They now have patriotic music playing and they're recognizing veterans who died for our country and those still living who offered so much valuable service. Now that the event is over, the building of the actual Field of Honor can begin in this field behind me. You see these big pieces of rebar. There are a thousand of them in a cross shape. And if you look over there, you can see what they do. They're holding a thousand American flags. Family spent $50 for one. They represent a veteran and the money goes to an organization that benefits veterans. It's going to be quite the sight. We're going to be out here to get video of it and we'll show it to you coming up tonight at 10. Now this the ceremony gets started around 430 this afternoon, honoring veterans from all military branches. In fact, they recognize veterans branch by branch, asking them to stand and presenting their flag and song. The Veterans Band of Corpus Christi got things started off with the national anthem, followed shortly by bagpipes playing Amazing Grace, recognizing those who paid the ultimate sacrifice. Car dealership owner Mike Shaw spoke because his organization that benefits veterans, Military VIP, is a co-sponsor of the Field of Honor. Nueces County is the other one, and County Judge Barbara Canales believes the display of flags is a perfect place for you to honor veterans and thank them. This is a chance for the next three weeks for members of our community to come out, walk our field of honor, and remember the sacrifice that has been given for you. Well, like she said, the Field of Honor will be here for three solid weeks. So you have plenty of time to come out here and pay your respects. The event organizers hope that veterans feel appreciated because of all this. We're going to try to talk to uh, one or two of those vets, and we'll hear from them coming up tonight at 10. Reporting live in Robstown, Seth Kovar, Chris 6 News. Thank you, Seth, so much for bringing us that story from the Field of Honor. You know, mm -hmm. whenever you think of patriotic ceremonies, yeah. I think Sherrill Park is the first place that you think of along the Bayfront. Yeah, and they couldn't have the official city ceremony there at Sherrill Park because of construction right now. So what they did, the city of Corpus Christi moved it to the Ben Garza Gym. So let's take a look at the event that happened earlier today. In fact, the Corpus Christi Mayor's Committee for Veterans Affairs sponsored this morning's event. The veterans who attended the ceremony were more than eager to serve, and they'd actually serve again if they were asked. You go to the service, you learn a lot of things that's going to help you in real life and supportive, and you can help people out. And if I could do it all over again, I'll do it in a heartbeat.
to do it all over again. You do it in a heartbeat, right? And the annual salute to veterans ceremony, by the way, was held right here at the USS Lexington earlier today. Admission to the Lexington was actually free for all veterans, active duty, as well as reserve members. This event included a wreath laying ceremony, and that was in remembrance of those who never made it back home. And you know, on Veterans Day, it only seems fitting to talk about Veterans Memorial in high school. Absolutely, and when it comes to honoring our veterans, this school really lives up to its name. Our own Taylor Alanis has that story. Before this campus became what it is today, Corpus Christi ISD hadn't opened a new high school in more than 45 years. In August of 2015, that all changed when Veterans Memorial High School opened its doors to students. Veterans Memorial High School, you know, is, is named after the, the rich tradition uh, in our community of our, our military presence here. And so uh, we take great pride as a, as a campus in honoring uh, our military, uh, both uh, current, uh, past and present. Before being named Veterans Memorial High School, CCISD asked the community to help name the campus. And since its opening, it's lived up to its name. You know, we try to do as many, anything and everything that we can uh, to say thank you to our veterans. From the school's Eagle mascot to the Starline dancers and their colors of red, white, and blue, Veterans Memorial oozes military pride. We have a wall that we where we honor all of our veterans that are employees uh, at Veterans Memorial High School, um, and just really try to find any opportunity that we can to involve our veterans in our any of events that we put on. I served in the United States Navy for 22 years. Jose Hernandez is new to Veterans uh, Memorial. Here, he started in they, September. Uh, they really appreciate veterans. Uh, they do a lot for not just the veterans, but for also the children that come here that are, uh, you know, sons and daughters of veterans. Like DJ Jimenez, a senior and a military connected child. He moved here from Virginia Beach because his parents were stationed here. He says before attending vets, it felt like home. My parents like were in love with the school. We had a tour given by Mr. Ozan, our assistant principal. And uh, he was just very, you know, just very outspoken, really easy to talk to. He made us feel like this was like home, like we were already going here. This year, Veterans Memorial was given a Purple Star designation by the Texas Education Agency. It's because of the school's collaboration with Naval Air Station Corpus Christi and its outreach for military connected families. The school also has Purple Heart parking spots and at every varsity football game a veteran is featured as he or she runs out with the team. It's a great feeling. It, it just makes us realize that uh, everything we do is not going unnoticed. Taylor Alanis, Chris 6 News. I like that, that it's yeah. not going unnoticed. You know, World War II veterans, they hold a very dear place in our hearts, but sadly, we are losing slowly more and more of them each and every day. We are, but that has really inspired one photographer to use his skills to immortalize our greatest generation. His story is coming up next. Watching a special Veterans Day edition of Chris 6 News, live from the USS Lexington. That's right, we are live from the Lady Lex in a way to honor our veterans here in the coastal. But you know, on Veterans Day, we have to think about our older veterans, our veterans who served in World War II, the greatest generation. And what's sad is that we are losing more and more of them every day. We certainly are. Katya, can you imagine at the beginning of World War II, we had 16 million service members from the United States right. serving. That number is down to 300,000, maybe even less than that right now. Well, one man is on a journey, however, to make sure that their sacrifice is always remembered. One, two, three. Here's your big smile right here. Jeff Reese <laughs> is in a race against time. Good. Telling stories. Where were you born? Born in Poolville, Texas. And taking photos. It's history, it's living history. Before it's too late. While I'm able to, to capture it, thinking about those movie stars and... He's getting first-hand accounts from World War II veterans. We can't reach all of them. I'm glad I can reach those who I am 
getting to to permanently see how that looks record their legacy so you were in charge of these other 16 drivers yeah uh, we saw a lot of things that that are hard to explain probably if i didn't you know their story wouldn't go much past their family for jeff i didn't serve in the military couple more it's personal i'm not a veteran but i have a respect and a love for veterans because of what they did. Jeff's father was an army paratrooper during Korea. He lost uncles who served. His brother and son are Marines. Chin down slightly. There you go. I can do something to give back and uh, thank the veterans who did do so much for us. Jeff is so thankful he's traveling all across America funded only by donations. His mission, preserving the sacrifices made by local heroes like Bob Batterson, who survived Pearl Harbor almost 80 years ago. We were back here. The, the planes came right by us. And Jose Mendez, who fought in Germany. We just didn't talk about it. And I'm talking to some of our friends feel the same way. Yeah. Until I've heard a lot like that and other war heroes like Preston Grantham. If I was in a war zone, I would patch up the bullet holes. I, that, I understand that. You know, a lot of planes coming yeah. in that yeah. are shot up. Yeah. We are losing these veterans by the hundreds every day. That's what makes it so urgent for me. And that's why Jeff started his project, Portraits of Honor, two years ago. That looks good. Veterans get their portraits for free. I don't know how many I'll be able to meet. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I'll just get to as many as I can. His race against time is daunting. We're in the final few years of that being able to, to happen. Oh, there's one. You want that one? They say an old soldier never dies. He just fades away. Thanks to Jeff Reese, now at least our memories of them won't fade away too. Such a good story, Patty. You know, Thanks. those pictures that you were showing at yeah. the very end there, those are seven of our World War II veterans here from the Coastal Bend. There are more yeah. here, but he was able to tell the story of those seven. It gives you a sense of pride. Yeah, sure, From back course. here at home yeah. to see their stories will be memorialized right, forever and ever. Sure. Uh, so Jeff is going to continue his important journey telling all those stories of World War II veterans. He's got a special trip coming up. The 80th anniversary of Pearl Harbor is oh. coming up in December. He will be there at Pearl Harbor. Wow. Hey, by the way, so you're wondering how does he continue to do this mission? I was asking that and yeah. there are several ways, right? I mean, yeah. this, he does this out of his own pocket. Out of his own pocket, but he uses a GoFundMe account. Mm -hmm. He set up a GoFundMe account and if you would like to contribute, if you'd like to donate, just go to my story. Go to ChrisTV.com backslash Veterans in Focus. Find the story and you're going to find a link to Jeff's GoFundMe page. All right, beautiful weather today for Veterans Day. A slight cool down, we are told, is in the forecast. We'll have that coming up right after the break. Now, your Chris 6 weather forecast with Chief Meteorologist Dale Nelson. Happy Veterans Day, everyone. This is a picture off the flight deck of the Lexington brought to us by uh, one of our photojournalists, Manuel Venegas. Uh, absolutely gorgeous uh, way to end a beautiful day, as Pat and Katya mentioned earlier, in spite of a front that went through earlier. You can see the uh, flag there on the deck there and uh, blowing around a little bit. We ended up at 63 and 87. Light winds around the front, and uh, that's why our temperature was allowed to go up 10 degrees above normal, no rainfall, but there was some around today near the coast. In fact, uh, over at Port Aransas, they had nearly a quarter of an inch of rain, and between Ingleside and just north of Aransas Pass, there were a few showers as well, but they were very stray in nature. 76 with an east wind at 10, indicating how weak this front really is. It's out here in the Gulf of Mexico and dissipating. 
cooler air is coming in behind this with high pressure driving it. There's a secondary push right up here in Nebraska and Kansas that will come in tomorrow night and that one will be felt a little bit more now that this front has already cleared the way and very dry air. You can see how well you're on the tail end of this moisture right here. That's why we didn't see any meaningful rain here with the exception of Port Aransas, but the dry air will bring beautiful weather here tomorrow and also throughout the entire weekend and into early next week. So reinforcing cold front coming tomorrow night just about the time most area football games are over with and as it comes through the winds will actually pick up and the humidity indicated by the dew point temperature will drop so tomorrow morning we'll be in the 50s already then we'll be back in the 60s during the day tomorrow but watch that reinforcing front and takes those dew point temperatures down into the 30s. It's going to feel terrific this weekend, especially at night. And here we are with a 40 degree dew point temperature at 6 o'clock on Saturday evening. So the uh, cooler to colder air brought to us by this deep upper level area of low pressure. But that moves off quickly and we start to get winds back out of the west. So more Pacific in origin and moderating temperatures then because of it Sunday, Monday and Tuesday of next week. So not going to last long this little uh, episode of great weather, but it will be around for the weekend. Light winds in the morning at about 8 to 10 miles an hour and in the afternoon. But then tomorrow night, once that front picks up, look at this uh, by Saturday morning, very gusty. Uh, Mariners, uh, tomorrow's a good day. Sunday's a good day. Saturday, not so much starting out, but by Saturday evening, the winds start to lay. In the meantime, north winds 5 to 10 knots tomorrow, smooth to slightly choppy bay waters and a moderate uh, UV index there. Walking the dog this evening, Preston will uh, love uh, this uh, slightly cooler weather with temperatures dropping in the 60s and about a 10 mile an hour wind. Lows tonight will be mainly in the 50s except 60s along the coast and highs tomorrow will be in the 80s with 70s along the coast. So very, very nice. And the seven day forecast has 56 and 75 Saturday, 54 and 79 and beautiful on Sunday. Uh, more humid and windy Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday of next week. We'll have more from the Lexington and Pat and Katia right after this. Stay with us. Watching a special Veterans Day edition of Chris 6 News, live from the USS Lexington. Welcome back to our Veterans Day coverage here aboard the USS Lexington. And we want to take you south right now to Fremont, where there's a new nonprofit out there, Katya, that's giving veterans a better quality of life. It is, and our Iran Hammy shows us what the Fremont Veterans Association is doing. In the small town of Premont, veterans can be isolated from many resources. Ricardo Rubio says somebody's got to help them, hence the creation of the Premont Veterans Association. It was a little over a year ago Rubio and a few others came together to find a way to support the veterans around Premont. I've been here 11 years and we've been always trying to get a veterans organization going because we have a lot of retired and old veterans here in our community and we never had an opportunity to bring them all together. What does the Premont Veterans Association do? Just about anything to help a veteran. If they need groceries, the PVA will take care of it. If a veteran needs a ride, someone from the group will drive you. And the nonprofit has taken it further, hosting a community Christmas meal, fundraising for the less fortunate and more. We just recently took a gentleman to San Antonio to go to the uh, Audiel Murphy Hospital where he had he had to have surgery, but we were happy to assist him and get him there. Membership continues to grow as people recognize the work the PVA is doing. The camaraderie is one of the biggest things. Uh, you really don't realize, uh, uh, and I say this, I've had family members, uh, my uncles and uh, that have served in, in the military, and never knowing what it exactly they went through. The group has now started taking part in veterans' funerals to present the stars and stripes to the Fallen's family. Rubio says this coincides with Premont being named a Purple Heart City. I think our community has really backed us up and in many ways uh, in, in the financial status. And when we have uh, events, they, uh, the, they come out in droves to, to try to help us uh, 
do whatever it is that we're doing for our fellow uh, veterans. Whether you're a veteran or related to a veteran, Rubio says all are welcome to join. To learn how you can get involved, you can check out ChrisTV.com. Reporting in Premont, Aron Hammy, Chris 6 News. And our special edition of Chris 6 News aboard the USS Lexington on this Veterans Day continues right after the break. We'll be back. Watching a special Veterans Day edition of Chris 6 News, live from the USS Lexington. What a beautiful sight to yes. see right now. Old glory as we stand here inside aboard the USS Lexington on Veterans Day as a tribute and an honor to say thank you to our veterans. Yeah, and I saw a ceremony here the other day. Mm -hmm. Six airmen were given their wings. Oh, Six of them, right here at a ceremony right here them. at the USS Lexington. It's uh, it's an honor for us to be here to yes. be able to bring you this newscast and we thank all of our veterans. Thank you for your service and hopefully you had a day that uh, you got a lot of praise today. We are so proud of you and we're going to wrap things up from the Lexington. We'll see you tonight at 10.